Are you ready for the Low Blows Network? And so our watch continues as each week we break down the new episode and say a long farewell to Game of Thrones. Spoilers are coming in the latest episode. The almost Star Wars sounding The Last of the Starks is here. So let's break down what happened. The Battle of Winterfell survivors give a funeral to the fallen as the girls who had them in the friend zone look on and weep. You either get out of the friend zone or die, lads. There's a lesson for us all there. Gendry makes it into, uh, gets made into Lord of Storm and for his battle heroics, but he's also going to be Lord of the Wanks as Arya was having none of his proposal. Brienne pops her cherry to Jamie, leaving a sobbing torment, taking his blue balls and going home beyond the wall. Uh, Bronn confronts the Lannister brothers and gets offered Highgarden for the price of not murdering them. A tactic that works better in Game of Thrones than in permanent TSP's mortgage department. John tells his sisters, You're not my real sisters! Despite Danny's pleas to keep his heritage a secret, Sansa keeps his secret for a solid five minutes. Arya and the Hound go on a road trip, but mountains can make for tough terrain during winter. Varys and Tyrion talk trees, and as Danny starts to unravel the situation, which will no doubt be made infinitely worse after Euron kills Rhaegal during a scorpion filled ambush at sea. Upon hearing this, Jamie tells Brienne that he's going to buy a pack of smokes, but she knows what that means and is left to lament the giant baby she could have made with Tormund instead. Finally, Daenerys goes to King's Landing to treat with Cersei. It goes about as well as any reasonable conversation can with Cersei. She murdered Mersandi. Uh Guys, we are going to break all of that down. Uh, Rick Nash here, as always, joining me uh, are Katie Harvey, the Queen of Irish Wrestling. I'm seeing a lot of... Hate for this episode online. We won't, we won't get into the specifics, but Katie, did you enjoy this? Let's get a litmus test as uh, we get kicked off here. I thought it was shy. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it. I'm sorry. Okay, I have I have lots of reasons I did not enjoy this. Okay, interesting. Keen, you're... Man, I was actually the you. same. Well, I, was, I wasn't going to say it because I was like, I thought it was like... Because I thought people were like, you know, oh, it's really good. It's just you have to be patient. So, so I was like, ah. Oh. All right, I'll be patient then. Fine, <laughs> but now if someone else isn't like, it, yeah, fuck it. I, thought, I, I was bored, man. I, I, like, I'm not saying it was bad. I just wasn't really, just didn't really care. I just wasn't into it. Okay, I, I just, I want to, I just want to see people die and then go back to wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> You're just here for the death scenes. There you go. Fair enough. Joining us this week is our very special guest. Brace yourselves, guys, because none other than how would you put this? I was going to say. The first ever NLW champion, but not like you weren't the first ever, but you were the first ever with the new kind of title when they changed it up a bit. Like it's a lot of words. How do you put it? Uh, um, uh, uh, Terry Thatcher. There I you go. Yeah, Terry yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just go with that name. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Terry. Uh, well, well, we're getting straight into it. Yeah. How did you feel? A lot uh, of for this episode. Yeah, kind of seems like I'm in the minority here because yeah. I kind of liked it. Yeah, so I did. Yeah, well, I, two I enjoyed two. it. Two and yeah, two. So yeah. we've got split All opinions, right. which is a good setup to, to get started. But, like, a lot of people may not know that you're a huge Game of Thrones fan. So talk us through kind of your origin story with the show. Like, were you in it from the beginning or did you kind of binge it or did you do a Katie on it and come in really late in the game? Uh, do you read the book? How, what's your Game of Thrones origin story? Um, I, yeah, I came in like two seasons, I think. And uh, yeah, it was just, I just finished watching, do you remember the show Oz? Yeah. Yeah, we just finished watching like the four, six seasons of that. I was, yeah, mad into that. Um, yeah, and we kind of, myself and Linda, we finished watching that and we legit had one of those, those moments where like you watch the last episode of a show and the credits roll, the screen goes black, and you could just see our reflections in the screen, and we looked like, you know, Bart and Lisa after they've been told, you're not going to itchy and scratchy land, <laughs> you're going to the board sanctuary. We have one of those, Woo! <laughs> yeah, so we had that, and then a mate of ours told us about Game of Thrones, and he downloaded the fourth season. So Linda's, you know, back in the day in her weird unemployed life where she'd sleep all day and <laughs> stay up all night <laughs> watching random shit on YouTube. She, um, yeah, she started watching Game of Thrones and about three episodes in, she's like, 
turning around and elbowing me and she's like, shoot name, shoot name, wake up, wake up. <laughs> and then uh, yeah. the rest is history. Pretty much. Brilliant, yeah. Brilliant. yeah, got into it from there. Good stuff. So we're looking forward to getting your thoughts as we go on. What could be a controversial episode of Game of Low Blows? Uh, before we get kicked off, I don't know if you've heard already, Keen is actually what... Many of us didn't even realize exist a casual Game of Thrones fan. Uh, he doesn't like he doesn't pay attention to all the theories or read online or anything like that. He keeps his super fandom strictly for wrestling. So, as such, that where we may come in and we're like, "Oh, the Volunkar prophecy," <laughs> Keen doesn't know what any of that means. So every week we allot a bit of time where he gets to ask us questions. There's no such thing as a bad question, although you have asked a few bad ones so far. I'm not gonna lie. It's not true, but <laughs> alright. <laughs> so we get we throw to him and we kind of fill in the blanks. What do you want to know? from this week's episode. Right. Actually, weird enough, even though I'm uh, apparently a casual fan, I actually have a, an Easter egg for later on, a, a theory Easter egg thing. Okay, exciting. So, you know, I actually have been getting more into it. Good. Um, but remember, like, Daenerys had, like, an ex. Yeah. And, and they, like, changed the actor for him. I think yeah. we talked about it before. What happened to that lad? Dariona Harris, uh, she left him in Marine to look after Slaver's Bay or Dragon's Bay, the Bay of Dragons as she... Is that like the old place that she took over? Was yeah, it? with all the slaves and stuff like that so she was free and she left him in charge of that because it would be a bad look to show up because you can't get married to him because he's just a cutthroat. She has to get married to someone powerful so she, it would have been a bad look to show up and she's like, oh, he's the fella I'm riding. <laughs> so, like, he's back there minding everything so that's that's Dario, yeah. Ah, Okay. That's, yeah, that's it. That's, that's all I need to know. They're all your questions. You're up to date, apparently. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, interesting. I can't, I can't wait for this Easter egg. Like, I, I, I kind of hope it's total bollocks. Um, no, it's, it's a really good Easter egg. Only I picked it up. It's not even like online or anything like that. Like, literally, only I noticed it. Okay, excellent. Right, you've really forward to it. Definitely not about Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. I swear it is. So when Eric Rowan won the tag <laughs> Uh, let's get started on the episode itself. Uh, we will get to I imagine the dislike part is going to be extended, but we'll start with the parts we liked. Uh, Katie, what did you like about this episode? I liked the first half of the episode. Okay. I liked, I liked the respectful funeral. I liked the banquet scene. I loved Arya turning down Gendry's proposal. Right. Oh, poor because, Gendry. <laughs> poor Gendry, but... She stayed true to her character. She's always said, like, and it harks back to the first season, I'm not a lady, you know? So I, I'm really glad she's stuck, stuck to that. And just because she's now, like, a badass and she's got the ride, she's not like, oh, my God, I love Gendry, and I'm going to go back and be his lady, you know? I, I just thought it was deadly that she turned him down. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, and as well, like, it's, it would have been weird to see her be like, oh, my God, really? Yeah, it just gets all emotional. It's like, you just killed him. Like, Gendry's yeah. a bit clingy as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, kind of everybody in Game of Thrones, like, it's like they get one ride and then it's like, I'm madly in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Tinder scene. No. <laughs> this is what they're missing. If they had Tinder, they'd all be casual dating and they'd all be yeah. like, are we exclusive? But Gendry <laughs> has sex with a girl 24 hours, le- or 24 hours later. It's like, marry me. <laughs> <laughs> marry me, please. I cannot live without you. The past 24 hours have shown me. It was a bit much. Uh, Keen, what uh, did actually, you like? Actually, I have a question about that, right? Right. Why can't Arya, right, just be a lady but keep killing people. Why couldn't you just say like, yeah, and then just like, keep doing what you're doing? I, she doesn't want to be a lady. Yeah. Like, like ladies have like certain expectations and etiquettes they're supposed to keep and she doesn't want that. Oh, okay. She wants to like break the mold and just be herself. Yeah, right, fair enough. And <laughs> <laughs> um, what I liked bronze scene. I thought that was cool. Yes. And I think, I think it was actually really nice of him what he did. I know he like, Punched Harry in the nose and all that, and like fucking threatened, threatened the two of them. But like, like shot a crossbow at Jamie. Like. Yeah, <laughs> but like, he could have come down and, and just killed him anyway. Instead, he's basically like, right, I've been told to kill you, so you know it's it's up to you, whatever you want to do. I thought it was actually really nice. So, <laughs> I don't know. And also, he's funny as fucking charismatic. I, I love Brock. Yeah, he owns it. Every time he's on the screen, like, it was, uh, we, we have the chats in the Low Blows WhatsApp, and Jerry came out like in strong with a hot take early and he's like I hated the bronze scene and it's like what? And he's like and then later on he was just like alright I think I was just tired <laughs> and it was like it was amazing it was like f- it was like Bron and fast forward it was like he just comes in he's like fucking swaggering he's shooting crossbows he's punching Tyrion he's being fucking charismatic as fuck it was awesome what was it? Like straight away the, like he's just firing back one line as Tyrion's like y- you broke my nose no I didn't how do you know? I've been breaking noses since I was your size. 
I know what it sounds like. I can't yes. do a run. I didn't prepare. We're all of three minutes in. I've heard one of Rick's I did, famous impersonations. <laughs> I did not prepare that. <laughs> I was really and me and Kate just looked at you like, is this good? <laughs> are we, are we going to make fun of him or are we not? <laughs> I, was, I was literally like, oh God, I'm doing a Braun impression. That's what was happening. I was not prepared for that. <laughs> uh, Terry, what did you like uh, in this episode? Um, give me two seconds because I, I was on the bus on the way I mean like I live in Temple Bar sorry this is literally next door uh, yeah. to when I was walking the four steps over there I made a load of notes that's impressive <laughs> so seriously fast that's why I was so me. early right fair enough fair enough <laughs> The Terry. first time in my life I've ever been early for anything. Terry was here before me today. Was really <laughs> well, look, he lives in Temple Bar. It's to be expected. Like, but like, still, fair play, respect. Uh, yeah, I made a few, a few little notes. Um, just yeah, I really loved the whole feast at the start. Yes. The, it was just so tense. Like, it was proper red wedding vibes. Like, oh. the whole time I was watching it, I was sitting on the edge of my seat, just going, "No, nah, everybody is too happy here." <laughs> somebody is like seconds away from being like decapitated right now yeah someone did but like i had to wait for like an hour and a half for it to happen <laughs> but yeah that whole first 20 minutes i was just really really unnerved especially with the little those little young ones walking around serving drinks and stuff like that yeah. i have a have a theory on that okay cool. um, i'm very intrigued my theory like everybody is freaking out about this whole um Euron's little uh, sneaking up on everybody. Yeah, 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 the ambush. Everybody's freaking out about that. Like, And yeah, a lot of it doesn't really make sense. Like, how did Daenerys not see them? Like, they're a fucking fleet of about 19 ships. Mm. Surely she would have spotted them. But uh, I was thinking about it and I was like, well, how did he know where they were going? And the whole time I was watching that feast, I was like, these young ones who are serving the drinks, they're really sussy. Mm. They're really sussy. I got like a a bit of a you remember like almost like when Arya was was yeah, doing the faceless man thinking. thing yeah, yeah, when yeah. she killed Walder. Yeah. Uh yeah, I got a proper vibe off of that. Interesting. Uh so I reckon they may have been spies for uh for a thing, for Cersei. Yeah. Uh, sent there by what's it uh, by Kyborn. Yeah. Because he has he has all of um very old, old spies and all mm. of his uh, his old networks. So birds. maybe now the only where the only place that kind of collapses on itself is um, yeah when they're uh, when they're at the feast and they're wandering around they get stuck into everybody. The battle plan hadn't been made yet. Yeah, but you know maybe they stuck around and got some more rides and got some more info. This is it, yeah. Do you, do you know what I loved about this as well? And this is just a little tidy thing. I was going to say this in Easter eggs, but we'll bring it up now. Did anyone notice Pod talking his way into the threesome? <clears throat> it was literally in the background of this, right? Rewatch it. It's fucking hilarious, right? It's when Tormund is crying to the Hound and, like, the Hound sends away his girl that, like, comes onto him. And then Pod, who's already pulled, just sneaks up in the background. He's not even in focus. And you just see the girl walk over. And Pod just puts his arm around her. And he's like, come on with us. And they just walk away together. We're like, sex gone, Pod. Strikes again. <laughs> fucking legend. <laughs> it's fucking amazing to watch it. It's like they just did it for the crack. It was hilarious. Um, yeah, I love uh, the feast as well. It was just nice. A nice like tone break from last week and obviously we started with the funeral which was very intense and and, and and fitting as well it was it was a nice kind of send off to those characters but at the same time we needed something to kind of bit of levity kind of to bring us back in as well and with there being so few episodes left you want to cherish the times where you can get the characters being happy so when we get that and when we get them just interacting and having the crack in the banter um it's great, but also it started the seeds for my favorite part of the episode, which was Danny and her descent into madness. Like at one stage, like she like leapt into the future, bought a Starbucks, came back with the <laughs> cup, <laughs> and had it on her table. That's how I'm saying it in my head. Like she's gone crazy. Like no, but I loved Amelia Clark in this episode. I, I'm not gonna turn around and say that like she's been perfect the whole series or that she's even 
maybe not even in the top five actors in this, uh, but this was her episode. Like, we got the full range of her and how they told the story. Because I still feel bad for Danny in a little way because she's done nothing necessarily wrong, but now the walls are closing in on her just because people around her keep dying. Like, she lost Jorah the last time. We spoke about how that could impact her last week. Um, this this week, she lost Regal and she lost Masandi. Who left is a Danny OG. There's no one. Like, her, her longest of voices are Tyrion and Varys, and they only came along around season four. Like, the walls are closing in on her, and when she just had that line to John where she's like... Um, you know, where she's like, ah, oh, I know people have looked at me that way, but never on this side of the continent. And then when she went to him, like, and just said what was on her mind and was just like, I'm literally begging you. I need this. Like, I'm like, okay, do you know what? You, you could have been a dick, but you just went and said, I really want this. You don't want it. Please, like, can we work together? I just want things to be normal. I felt bad for her, and I continue to feel bad for her. But I also see that she's clearly turning heel. You've been waiting for this for a while, and you've been saying it like this is your I told you so since the start. Because you're like, she's a dick! I told you she was a dick! (laughs) So you must feel pretty vindicated by all this. What were your thoughts on seeing it kind of transpire? Yeah, I still don't like her, but what I will say is I hate it that she begged John. I All think right. it's so out of character for her. I just think it just shoehor- shoehorned in the heel turn too quickly and too suddenly. Like, look at everything she's done in eight seasons. Look how many people she's stood up to. Look at what a badass she's been, even if I don't like her. And she begged a man to, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It just didn't sit with me right. And there's a few things in epi- in the episode we can get on to, like, where I just thought it was really wildly out of character for some people. And it very much felt like, oh shit, we only have three episodes left, so we have to hurry this along. Right. Uh, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't like her begging. And uh, I just thought it was all too rushed. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I, I, like, I have to say, though, I did love her performance because... And you're, you're right when you say it is rushed, but it, it has to be. There are three episodes left, so they do have to like get to where they need to be. And the actors then have to take those directions and roll with it. And I was listening to a podcast today which referenced an interview with uh, Nicolás Costa Waldo, uh, who plays Jamie. Sorry, are we allowed to mention real names in front of Keane? Like, I thought we were still in, <laughs> like, in strict Keane fight. I don't know who the fuck he's talking about, I've got to be oh, honest. Okay. <laughs> he, he was one of the Dr. Rocky. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> uh, but J- the guy who plays Jamie was turning around and he's like, if you feel frustrated, we get it because... We, ha- we used to have a full season to flesh out these things, but now we have to act the, the transitions in our head so we know where the character is. Uh, and I think you saw that with Danny in that she had to leap a few stages ahead, but Amelia Clark performing that was able to get you there. Like when she just turned on John immediately, when she's begging one second and John's like, ah. I have to tell all you, and Sansa. I don't know why he's in the Queen Vic, but... <laughs> Pressure <is>. number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it back. Um, <laughs> but also, like, then she just goes into the Danny we know, and she's just like, this is the way it'll happen. And it's like, oh shit, I was actually a bit afraid there. <laughs> I, I fucking weed myself a little looking at that. Like, that's fucking terrifying. Like, and. Well, she was back to her bitch self, actually, before that. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <Right. laughs> I just popped back into my head when they were making the battle plan. And Sans is like, the men need to rest. Like, the, the forces have been halved. And she's just like, no, yeah. march them now. You know what? Maybe her dragon deserved to die because she should have waited. Ah, no, don't take it out dragon's fault. Like. Don't take it out <laughs> Jesus Christ, like, fucking have a bit of... It's, it's her fault. fault. It's her fault. Uh, I liked how it got back to the politics and scheming. That's mm. what we watched Game of Thrones for. Tyrion and Varys, like, just having the absolute chats. Like, there were bits that were a bit ham-fisted for me. But uh, your thoughts on kind of the Tyrion and Varys, the, the chats? And oh, the, man, the I, I, I love the fact that, that Varys is back in the game. Yes. I absolutely love it. Because, like, like, these first few episodes of the season, and he's just kind of, he's almost like just a background character. He's just, and making, like, shitty little one-liners here and there, like, just nothing of value, but like he's really gotten back to where where he should be. Like he's he's fighting for the realm. He's yeah. doing what he believes to be right for everybody. And like if he looks at John and he says, "Well, he's going to be the better one," then 
he's going to do whatever whatever he has there. But, like, it's just, it's more of the, the varies of old. Mm. Like, because, yeah, he's just been a bit, I don't know, pardon the pun, but neutered. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy with that one. <laughs> uh, that's in the notes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, you know, it's very true. <laughs> and uh, it, it, your thoughts on, on Varys coming back. He's obviously, I remember you saying he was one of your faves as well, so. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's your words. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't say he's one of my favourites. Okay. Um, I mean, if he dies, he dies. But he is an interesting character, though, I suppose. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's... I don't know. I, I'm, yeah, no, I, like, I'd rather see him involved in some way, even if he ends up getting killed off than just doing nothing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, once he's there, I don't know, yeah. He's all right. <laughs> I liked as well how kind of they played out his arc within the episode where it's like um, he's thinking about, they're, they're having the chats and they're like, right, uh, what are we, we going to do here? And then he's like, right, okay, I've made a pledge to Daenerys already that if I disagree with her, I'm going to say it to her face. He says it to her face. It only kind of reinforces the fears he already has. Then he starts to talk about treason, and it'd be interesting to see. How do we think, like, what's that going to look like? Is is he going to have her? Is he going to try? Are we going to see an attempted murder on her? Or could he go another way and, like, I was trying to think, what could Barris do? What are, what's the skills? Information is his thing. What if he lets Cersei know that Daenerys isn't actually the rightful queen, even by her own statement. Like, what if somehow, not that he's going to meet with Cersei, but he just feeds it back through his little birds, and then that is how, that's probably the best way of getting the word out about John, because now it's information, as he said. That was a great line, by the way, where it's like, he's like, how many people know? Eight. Well, that's not a secret, that's just information now. <laughs> it was like, it was genius, but, like, how do we think Varys is, like, any, any thoughts on where? Like, He's got to trap and making people trap themselves mm. so he never gets caught. So it, it's going to be something wordy. And it's probably going to play on the fact that, like, John is so honorable. John will always do what's right. So if he can trap her somehow and see, she's, she's gone mad. She could start fucking killing people. So, like, it could be a Mad King thing where if John thinks she's going to blow up King's Landing, it's better to kill her. Same way Jamie had to do with the Mad King. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it, it. it He's she's gonna dig her own grave, like she's gonna be trapped somehow, like because everyone's like, oh, I can't believe like Cersei killed Missandei and stuff. That's the exact same situation as Danny and the Tarleys. Bend yeah. the knee or you die. Yeah, it's very very similar. Just instead of killing Danny, she killed Missandei. Like so, like she's been on the flip side of that situation. Mm. So I think she's gonna end up trapping herself just through her own madness. Okay, interesting. I thought at the end of the episode, like I didn't know the episode was about to end. When she started walking back towards the camera, I'm like, she's getting on the dragon. Like, she's going for the dragon right now, and she's going to fly up and burn the shit out of them. But it was interesting. What do we think of the ambush? Um, obviously, we talked, uh, like, people have had issues with it. I don't have as many issues that other people have with it. I'm, like, fine accepting it. I'm like, okay, like, I saw people online were saying, well, Danny is a dragon. Should have went ahead and scouted. I'm like... I don't know, sending the Queen to scout is a good idea. They don't have the troops from the Battle of Winterfell to be able to afford. Like, if that scouting mission goes wrong, they're not coming back. You know what I mean? They're, they're dead because it's your own Greyjoy. You've seen what he did. Like, this is, this is his, his area. So, like, I kind of... I can accept that they had to travel to Dragonstone. I can accept that they arrogantly thought they're not going to expect us to go to Dragonstone by ship. I also can accept, like, basically, based on, like, Tyrion and Cersei's conversation at the end of Series 7, where I'd imagine Tyrion gave her some intel without necessarily meaning to, and Cersei would know, all right, they're not going to burn King's Landing. They're not going to try and murder people. Like, I can, I can accept that Tyrion probably gave the game away, and Cersei's like, right, they have to come up with another way. Dragonstone is believable. Um, so, but a lot of people didn't like it. You guys are on record as saying <clears throat> you're fans of the episode. Did the ambush come into that? Were you not a fan? No, that was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't see what was wrong with it. The dragon did it. Did it get you, or were you, were you angry? A lot of people feel very differently about Rhaegal. It, it happened out of nowhere. I'll yeah. say that it, it shocked me, but I want to be shocked. I don't know. I thought it was entertaining. Uh, unlucky, you know what I mean? If you don't want to get shot, like move. <laughs> <laughs> it's own fault, like. I don't know. <laughs> Tough shit, like I, I love Euron, so I'm happy with it. If you, like. 
it's weird because I don't like Cersei, so I don't want her to do well. Right. But I love Euron, so I like to see him do well. So I don't know how to feel. <laughs> I'm a bit conflicted, like. So did you, uh, like, when you're when you're on this, literally just standing there, like being kick-ass? That was yeah. You I'll... were the one person on the planet going, "Fuck yeah, you're yeah, on. <laughs> I think it's cool, yeah." <laughs> I don't know. All right, fair enough. Did you have some of the issues that many had with this ambush? Yeah, it was just bad strategy, like splitting her army first of all, right? And then she's up high in the dragon. I agree with you; she shouldn't have scouted. But surely, being that high, she would have seen the ships coming. Would she not, like... I, I can accept it that she didn't. Like, Danny is not good at this stuff. Danny's military mind, minds in the past were Jorah and Sir Barris and Selmy. You think she would have learned something, though? Like, Sansa learned from people, and that's why Sansa's better. But I don't disagree. <laughs> I agree. Sansa on the Iron Throne. I'm sold yeah. for that. But even, like, even, when the first, even when the dragon got shot, why did she not circle around to the back of the ships? And start firing. Because the crossbows were mounted on the front of the ships. If she had just went around the back, they couldn't have shot her. And she could have taken them out from the back with fire. See, like, where I feel about this is, I don't necessarily blame the show for that. Like, I'm angry with Danny. I'm like, you fucking idiot. Like, why would you not do that? But I also accept that it makes, with what we've learned about Danny, it makes total sense that she's a pure hothead. She's got that Targaryen inbred blood flowing through her veins. I can yeah. totally accept that in that moment when she sees what she sees as her child die, she's just going to reel in and be like, fuck, go full Dragon Queen on them. Yeah, I think I just find it hard to believe that they defeated the Night King and the Army of the Dead and then Euron swanned in with seven ships. <laughs> Euron's a tank. And took them down. Really, really good at hide and seek. <laughs> <laughs> the man is Iron Fleet. Just he, coming around the corner. <laughs> they do this shit all the time. Like they did it to Tion and Yara last year. Took out yeah. the entire. Uh, how how do you feel about the the ambush? Yeah, like um, like uh, I was, I was sad to see Rhaegal go, and it was like kind of out of nowhere. But um, yeah, like I, I thought it was a bit kind of silly that they just showed up out of nowhere. Like uh, just yeah, that part didn't make sense. But yeah, the um. The idea about the the spies and all, like maybe it kind of explains why they knew where they were going and stuff like that. But mm. the actual the presentation of how um, Euron just showed up, I thought was a bit was a bit far fetched. Yeah, well, it, I know, strange, far fetched in a show about dragons and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, there you know has what to I mean? be an internal logic. Yeah, within the show as well, like you know, and that's kind of why we like Game of Thrones. So it's. I, I, I like while I don't necessarily hate it myself. It's it's not a case of I like it or like I, I didn't put this in the things I liked, <coughs> but <coughs> it's a case of I can accept that. I like w- when it, when it happened. I'm like, yeah, okay, you know what I mean? Because like I want to like this show, but I the show does have to make sense within itself. Because even like one of the things there was this calling card at the start was shit that happens in the real world will happen here. Whether we have dragons and zombies or magic and all that or whatever, but it's realistic. If someone's going to die in a situation, they'll die regardless of where it, whether the plot needs them or not. So they can be held accountable for that. I, one thing I did like about it was just... Um, I, I love watching the, the ships getting blasted apart by the, mm. the scorpions. And I think it's really cool that they've updated the scorpions. Yeah. Because uh, like last season, it was... Yeah, it was impressive looking, but it wasn't really practical. But yeah, I think it's it's really cool that they've used them now. Um, I did think it was hilarious watching uh, Tyrion kind of waddle around and, and <laughs> yeah. bounce around the ship. I thought yeah. I I don't know why. I just thought that was really funny. <laughs> and like this, uh, like I'm I'm not like racist against small people or like <laughs> like I'll leave the racism to. Uh, no! <laughs> pro, pro slavery. I'm delighted we get to this. <laughs> Katie Harry's pro slavery for like what a third or fourth week now. It's unreal. I don't know how this keeps coming up. <laughs> All right, calm down there, Confederate. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I did. I love that. Like Tyrion, whenever he's involved in any action and physical kind of stuff. Like there's higher stakes because mm. like he does he does a, like obviously yeah he's a natural disadvantage you know what I mean but at the same time like he's shown he's badass so like yeah that I found that scene really exciting as well like because it's just like they'll do it they'll kill Tyrion yeah. here there's no reason they won't kill Tyrion at this stage we're at the end game guys so it's like anyone at any stage could die I didn't see a dragon dying at mm. the start of this episode. They could do it, so it did have those stakes for me. That's what it I was really also really cool as well. Like the the whole episode is littered with tiebacks to previous episodes, mm. 
Um, this, again, because every time Tyrion is in any sort of a battle, he's there for about two minutes and then gets knocked out. Yeah, Big mast landed on his head. Yeah, this is true, and he somehow survived that. <laughs> that like, yeah, that, that was a bit of a reach for me. Uh, let's let's get to the other big kind of set piece: uh, the the meeting at King's Landing. Uh, Danny, in response to all this, uh, came up obviously at Tyrion and Kyburn. Uh, was this another part of the show you weren't a fan of? Yeah, and look, this is just going to feel the race something, but I don't care about Grey Worm and Missandei. I really don't. <laughs> Like oh. as as a, as a couple, you I don't just, care about the slaves. <laughs> <laughs> but as a couple, I just never. I don't know. I just never took to either character. I don't know why. Um, no so idea why. Absolutely <laughs> no clue. <laughs> don't know why she didn't like the former slaves. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. It's so coincidental. I didn't find this as heartbreaking as a lot of other people. And again, like because it echoes uh, Danny and the Tarleys, I was kind of like, I don't know why people are so upset because she did this to the two Tarleys beforehand like so it's it's perfectly within Cersei's character I'm actually surprised Cersei just didn't fucking set the crossbows off there then and annihilate them all to be honest mm. um, yeah so I, I didn't it just did like I, I, there was no emotional impact for me with that last scene a lot of people are bringing that up and they're like why did Cersei not kill anyone and for me I look at it and perceive it this way I'm like Cersei is still playing the role of like her entire kind of uh, reputation as queen and her power within King's Landing comes from the fact that she believes she is her people convinced that Danny is like a savage. She's trying to like bring. She's trying to take that. She's essentially the Mad Queen's daughter, and she's coming back with a vengeance. She's going to burn them all. And Cersei is the good queen protecting herself. The thing is, she was okay to kill Missandei because they were the terms that she set. She's like, surrender now or we kill Missandei immediately. So she had to. She had no choice when Danny didn't surrender. She couldn't kill them all because that's, like, she got away with burning the set of Baylor because she was able to twist it and be like, ah, oh, tragic accident. Like, and Wait, what was her? <clears throat> when she burns the, the church, like... When everyone died. When all the oh, all yeah, the yeah, 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 You're yeah. wearing your blue jumper. Yeah, <laughs> 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 hey, uh, yeah. I, like, I, like, I can accept this because, like, she moved everyone into the Red Keep, which was a shrewd move because she's telling them, I'm moving them in. You have the same protection as me, but really the move we know is that she's forcing Danny to have to burn the population of King's Landing if they want to get to Cersei. They're human shields, but they don't see it that way. So she couldn't have killed Tyrion. Killing an envoy... Is it's it's not okay in this world. Like uh, same way, Danny could have killed Kyburn, but she didn't. Like because it would have. It, it's, it's political. It's 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 the look, and as well, Danny's here to treat Cersei would look like a savage, and questions would be asked that Cersei couldn't. So I didn't have necessarily the same problems that anyone else had. Any, and but well, who would ask Cersei questions? Like who would question her? It's not that anyone would question her. It's that the people. There's more people than there is. Like politicians and army, you know what I mean. There's more. There's more of the regular folk. If they rebelled, who who Cersei the queen of? All she had, the only support she has are the people within King's Land. Uh, King's Land. Otherwise, she's just a person sitting on the throne. Were they not rebelling anyway, though? In earlier seasons, they were. Rebe they rebelled against Joffrey, and then since Cersei's come to power, I think everyone was kind of afraid of her because they're like. We don't know if she, like, nuked the city, and she seems pretty powerful and scary. But then when Danny came along, they were really able to... Really regretting that shame thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, like, yeah, Jesus. But they, uh, they, then when Danny came along, Cersei was able to twist it as, this woman is coming to burn your city. And that it forms her power base. So without that power base, and without that kind of, I'm protecting you facade, she's just a person sitting on a throne. And maybe she'd be able to keep that throne because she has the golden company and whatnot, but she, she's not the queen because mm. she's literally no kingdom she's ruling because every other kingdom is in revolt against her. So this is all she has. Like, it's what Danny was saying where they were advising her and they're like, look, we can just wait it out and the people will revolt against her when they see that she's her enemy. And she's like, no, well, she's on the throne. She can call herself the queen and that's what I want to take away from her. But that's all she has at this stage. So she can't give that up, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You sound like you, you don't like that information. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, it's just so many people have turned on Cersei, like, I'm just kind of like, what's a few more if she does kill them? You know, it's, I, I don't think the North and all would, would rise up 
in Danny's honor, you know, the same way like when Ned's head was chopped off, like everyone marched. So I don't know. It just it just seems everything is so far gone that some of the political rules don't matter anymore. Well, okay. So if she killed Danny, yes, like the North is gonna be like, oh well, Jesus, look, you saved us, but you're dead now. If she killed Tyrion. Sansa might react. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, like, it's a tight situation, and she just can't take any risks. She has to, especially in big public meetings like this, that people will be watching and keeping an eye on. She's on the walls of King's Landing. You have to believe that a lot of people are like, the, the Queen's on the fucking wall. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably be watching. Actually, yeah, I didn't think of that, because, like, the outside was so deserted. I, was, I just wasn't thinking about what people were doing on the inside. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Like, they, they would be keeping an eye on what's going on, so... Uh, any other thoughts? The the, the meeting. Um, yeah, like just on that. Like and again, like if if Cersei did kill Danny right there, John's already on his way, mm. and the North they will follow John unless Sansa decides to let slip what the 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 big news is. But, she um, has. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like literally minutes. Don't tell Sansa. <laughs> Sansa's like Katie. Don't tell her. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want the world to know. So yeah, no, sorry. Good but yeah, no, like um, until that info is out to the the Northern Lords, they will follow. They will follow John. Like mm. they've they've pledged allegiance to him. They, and after the the Battle of Winterfell, like he's like he's godlike now. Yeah. Like the shit that he was doing out there. Like they are gonna follow him no matter where he goes. So, whoever is left in the north would have followed John. Yeah. So, like, it's, yeah, one way or another, there's a, there's a war coming to her. Poor Daenerys. They're coming to like, Cersei. Literally, like, she's sitting right there, and Tormund's like, John got on a fucking dragon! <laughs> he got on a dragon! What a hero! And da- Daenerys is like... That's number three. Literally, the, the <laughs> dragon queen Have over Have you been here. practicing that? <laughs> yeah, better. <laughs> is it getting better? No, but like it is. <laughs> it's uh, a me, Torment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go back then. Fuck it. I'm like doing super Torment. Um, okay, so uh, yeah. So uh, any more thoughts on the the meeting with Cersei and Danny at the wall? Um, yeah, like when he when the mountain killed um, Miss Andy. Yeah, that wasn't very nice, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And really, that's all I have to say about it. I just, I just didn't think it was very nice. All oh, right, yeah, no, uh, not, a, not a good thing to be doing. Honestly. No, it's Don't not. Like, you can't just kill someone. Like, that's, you can't, can't be doing that. All right, <laughs> 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 hitting an Alice. <laughs> 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 Game of Thrones, eight season in, still shocked people are being killed. <laughs> Doesn't make it right though. Do you know what I mean? Just because people do it, that's, that's murder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, there's, a, there's a lot of that. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get on to it. What we didn't like from the episode. All right, guys, ha- have at it. Okay, so my main thing was because I was saying. Some things the episode felt very out of character. Okay. One of them was Brianne sobbing because a man was leaving. Like, I hate it on two levels. I hated it because he made Brianne cry, and that really upset me. And I hated it because, why is she crying over someone? Like, okay, I know her and Jamie are in love and stuff, but, like, she's been so tough and so strong and so amazing, and then she's crying because he's riding away. I just didn't like it. It's, I didn't your, like it's it. that one shag reel that, like, he shag once. I'm madly in love with you now. That's it. Wait, Jamie, what? Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> but I actually liked his reasons for going because you don't know if he's going out of some weird loyalty to Cersei or you don't know whether he's just so angry he's going to kill her. Like, I think there's still questions about his mindset and what's going to happen. Okay. But surely, like, she's been around. She should surely understand that, like... He has stuff going on. Like, like there's an army marching to kill his weird sister lover. He's probably going through some stuff. He probably needs to leave for a while. Like, I just hate that she's that dependent on him after, like, two days. Yeah, but, like, let's flip this for a second. And I don't completely disagree with what you're saying. But let's flip this for a second, right? Um, you're Brienne. Brienne, we established in this episode, cruelly am I not by Tyrion. This was mean when he's, like... You're a virgin. It's like, dude, come on. We all know, but like, you don't bring that up. When You're like... a virgin and you can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> what an excellent yes. reference. <laughs> Linda told me I had to say that. <laughs> there, she actually wrote the note. <laughs> uh, you better fucking say. Yeah, she's like, um, But as well, like, <laughs> do you ever find someone who you know, like, you know, isn't that experienced? 
but then they get with someone and like the someone they get with is like baggage fucking coming out <laughs> the fucking wazoo and you're like they are gonna eat you alive i feel like that's like we can't just be in as being the warrior now we have to judge her as being the lover and that is not her forte she's not strong in that area and she's literally going out with a guy who's banging his sister it's like you're trying to you're starting the game on advanced yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you are not ready to play this. You need to go through beginner mode. You need to get yourself a Gendry. Like you know what I mean? You, you her and Gendry would be well matched. Marry me, okay? <laughs> 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 this is what people do. Ah, uh, it was just too far out for me. I just yeah. felt like this episode, especially, it was very obvious. There's here. I'm gonna go full feminist here. Go there it. was no female writers. Right. Like uh, it was especially evident because you had like the Brienne thing, you had uh, the Danny Began thing, and the other thing I didn't like was Sansa's conversation with the Hound, where she was basically like, "I'm glad Ramsay happened to me. I'm glad that like all this bad stuff happened to me because now I'm a stronger person." And while I get the sentiment that bad stuff can make you stronger, it should be in spite of it happening and not because of it happening. I, yeah, well, this is we're about to get very philosophical. I, I, I sorry, I, I disagree there again. I think I, I, I think that's quite a powerful and salient point in that it's like does the bad like does how not like the bad stuff happening to us but how we recover from it is that not a fair I'm not saying that it's definitely the way but like it's very fair that that is a large part of what oh no but that's it people. and the way you phrased it is perfect yeah but the way they phrased it was basically like. I'm really glad all this shit stuff happened because it may, like it's yeah. the reason I'm yeah. a stronger person. It's yeah. it's it's you know it's just a very small thing. But I see in a lot of articles online where women who have survived stuff in real life were very very upset about yeah. how it was phrased. So okay. I'm I'm kind of thinking again like okay, uh, like okay I know me breaking my arms is nothing like anything she no, went no. through, but like yes. Good things came out of it. I got to spend more time with my family, other stuff. Am I glad it happened? Absolutely fucking not. Like, yeah, if I had a choice, yeah. I wouldn't have wanted it to happen and I'd get strong in a different way. Yeah. You know? I just thought it was phrased really badly and really clumsy. And I just think, because it happened with three female characters in the same episode, I'm like, oh, just hire a female writer. Just just have a conversation with a woman. Like... <laughs> <laughs> But I'm reading these books. <laughs> George, finish them. I'm reading the books at the moment, right? And uh, it's describing a scene between Catelyn and uh, Liza Aaron. And right. it's, it's uh, Catelyn hasn't seen her in years. You know how she describes her? Yeah. I looked at my once slender and high-breasted sister. <laughs> Who the fuck <laughs> describes their family members like that? Never has it been more obvious that a man wrote that book. Like... <laughs> I like look at George R. R. Martin. Like, yeah. <laughs> Never has it more been obvious than that man wrote. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like and oh. she have to say in his voice as well, my high breast and sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like and she's like, I, I'm so sad, like she's saggy and I'm like, that's what's going through your head after you see it's not like, Oh, there's poor Jamie Lannister, he's aged, his balls have gone grey. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's not how he describes the male characters like and for the first time ever i saw a touch of that in the tv show where i'm just like yes you've yes, never spoken to a woman like what is going on here like okay look that's a that's a very good point and they have been poor on this issue especially when you turn around and you're like looking at it from a survivor's point of view from something like that um and then yeah they hear it described that way it's like oh, i don't know about that like i have some issues so totally I get that. Yeah, yeah. I, the sentiment is is great. Yeah. The way they phrased it and handled it, not so great. What they went for is because she like she was talking to the hound and he's like, "What happened? What happened to Ramsay?" And she's like, "Hounds!" Like she's being a badass. Yeah, so yeah. That's what they're going for there, but they just forgot to take it into account. It's like when when the incident actually happened and Ramsay did rape her, and then they focused on Tion's thing, and it's like, I see what you were going for. Yeah, but you. No. <laughs> yeah, you have to be a little bit more careful with something like that. Yeah, yeah, no, your yeah. audience isn't going to view it yeah. that way. Yeah, so o I totally accept that. Other than that, love the stuff with her and the hound, the little hand touch, like yeah. he's finally comfortable with her. Like, I, I would ship them too, to be honest. Uh, yeah, but uh, I just didn't like that little part. On the Jamie thing, um, I... Uh, I feel like I'm going against you a lot this week. Yeah, me um, and Keen are on the same side. What's going on? This is, yeah, this is where Queen versus Keen is. It's on a break. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be friends now. It's grand. Um, but I actually didn't like 
Jamie's reasoning because here's what happened in the in the, the, the show, right? Danny gets her dragon killed. Jamie learns about this when he walks in the conversation with Sansa and Brienne. The next scene is Jamie going out to get a bag of, a pack of smokes, like we were saying earlier on. So, like, what information are we supposed to, as the audience... We've spoken about this before. Game of Thrones is great with the editing and that one scene blends into another. And what you're left thinking about one scene, you're meant to take over to the next scene. So what are we, the audience, meant to surmise caused Jamie to do that? It's not that Cersei needs his help. Cersei's just had a big win. So we're like, when we see Jamie getting ready, we're like, oh, fuck, he knows. He's the only one who can get access. Cersei's getting stronger. Because literally the last line in that scene where Sansa going, I would have liked to seen her executed. Sansa talks about his ex- her execution, cut to Jamie getting dressed and leaving. So we're like, oh, it's happening. So when S- Brienne then comes outside and then Jamie's like, I've always loved Cersei, like in his own way. Although, he, let's be fair, he didn't actually say, he didn't confirm, he just implied that he was doing it out of love. When they kind of made it into a will he, won't he, I'm like, you don't need to do that. Like, we're fine with you saying, with Jamie saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to kill Cersei. Like, someone needs to do it, I'm going to do it. We know now, you've tipped your hand too, hard, too far for that. So I've no problem with you saying that because I still have a million questions. How is he going to kill her? Like, What's he going to do? Why is he going to kill her? You know what I mean? There's so much tension left in that story. How is he going to get close enough to her when he knows she's put a hit on his life? Like, how is he going to get back in? That's, that's a, a compelling story. But he's not going to kill her because he thinks she's pregnant with his baby. Yeah, uh, but, like, as well, they also led into it with... Like, why is it, what, uh, then what is Jamie's motivation for going back? Jamie doesn't think he's good enough for Bri- Brienne or that good life right. he's done too many because he listed out all the shitty things he did to me it's it, like he's like I was all I, I'm hateful to me it feels like he doesn't believe he deserves that happy ending right. so he's gonna go back to Cersei he's gonna go back to being a shithead oh okay you've made me think about that, in that that's way. just what I took but I didn't think about the blend and scenes thing but that's what I took from it is that like things are going so well Brienne for the first time in his life like he never thought he'd have a woman or land written like that he was always a, a Kingsguard and now he has this nice life and he doesn't think he deserves it. Right. Because, like, he listed all the shitty things. Like, I pushed a child out the window. People forget about this. Yeah. Like, so. Oh, he's got, like, a bit of the too good to be true. It's interesting having the gender split for that. Because usually when we hear that story, it's like a girl being like, it's too good to be true. What's going to happen? Like, it's going to all go wrong. But, like, having Jamie go that way, who he'd associate as, like, a strong warrior type. That's very interesting. I like that. What are your yeah, thoughts um, on the Jamie Bn? Kind of? I'm kind of looking at it like he's gonna make one last ditch effort to try and appeal to her, right. to to Cersei, to just like give up the throne, get out of there. Like and like you said, like hearing those, hearing Sansa saying, "I wish I had a seen her executed." That's like, oh shit! It's like they're gonna kill a whore. Like there's there's no yeah. Cersei's never gonna give up the throne. Well, she's definitely not gonna. She's not gonna give it up to Daenerys. Maybe I can make one last ditch effort to try and save her, and like uh, try and save her or die trying. Like that's he knows that's that's what's gonna happen, and like it is one of those. Like you're saying, it's too good to be true. So fuck it. I might as well go out. Yeah. Go out on my shield. Like like if I'm if I'm gonna if I'm gonna die, I'll make one last ditch effort to. Save someone. Save the person that I really love. His 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 phrases. He wants to die in the arms of the woman he loves. Yeah, and it's just shit that that's that seems to be Cersei. If mm. if, if he is going out, like he thinks it's going to end. Keen, how do you see this playing out? I hope he fucking dies. It should have <laughs> been. It should have been Tormund. It should have been Tormund and Brienne. I've said this before. Do you know what I mean? Like, how uh, did you feel during that kind of I, our instantly iconic moment where? Tormund realised that it wasn't going to happen and then cut to him, like, screaming. Were, were you, or cut to him crying to the hell. Were you crying along with him? Yeah. No, like, that's, <laughs> that's bullshit, man. Like, I mean, and it shows. Like, look, where's Jamie now? Jamie's going back to fucking, you know, going back to Cersei, whereas, like, Tormund would have stuck around. You know what I mean? Tormund was legit. But it is what it is. It, it was heartbreaking hearing him t- tell John uh, where he was like, you know, the girls up here, they don't like me. And it's like... 
He's leaving because of the end. He's, 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 <laughs> he can't stay around there. He can't be around. We'll see where another guy. Very respectful, though. Like, points to Tormund for being told <laughs> no and just, okay, that's fine. I'm <laughs> leaving. <laughs> you know, and, and I wouldn't believe that's his wildling kind of past. He's evolving as a man, you know what I mean? Usually he would have gone in, killed Jamie, took her. Like, you know, but <laughs> he's growing. He's showing growth. Well done, Tormund. And look, he got a dire wolf out of it. Well, this is it. Let's get on to it because another big point in this episode. John... One of the characters that, you know, unanimously light, as close as you can get to unanimous in Game of Thrones. John, Tyrion maybe, but there's very Bron, but there's very few others. But John John lost a lot of points with a lot of people this week, and this is something that I definitely agree on. Oh yeah, like he's a shithead for, for giving Ghost away. Like Ghost has been there for eight seasons following him around and he just doesn't even give him a peck goodbye. I can kinda kinda understand him leaving him up north. Like just about, because it's with a friend, he's going to be looked after, he's, he's back in, in the forest. Cannot understand why he didn't even say goodbye. He hugged Jilly, he doesn't even know her, like, and he didn't hug Ghost. And then I read some bullshit reason, like, oh, it's, you know, the CGI cost. He wrote a fucking dragon last week, you know what I mean? <laughs> if that didn't cost a load of CGI money, I don't know what did. Yeah, this is it. It's like when you get a new kind of phone, or like, say you have a new phone, you're playing with that the whole time, and then you get an iPad. And you just forget about the phone, and the phone's just over there. <laughs> That's him with Ghost. It's shitty. Uh, your thoughts? Ah, uh, yeah. It it's, 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 it was kind of a dick move. Um, yeah, maybe he was just kind of white fanging him. He was just, no, no, I don't want to be your friend. Go away, go away. Yeah. Like just being mean to him so he won't follow him or something. I don't know. But yeah, it was a it was a dick move. Really bad. We criticized John's pet ownership skills before a game of low blows. This is a bad way to go out. I get what he did it though. They wanted they wanted us to have a moment where it's like and ghosts lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I think why they wrote it in. But like just have him pat him on the head. Yeah, no, he's in better hands though. Do you know what I mean Tormund Tormund wouldn't do that. Do you know what I mean he he loved dogs. He he treated them with respect. So I, I think Ghost's in a better place now, do you know what I mean? He's in a better place. He's not dead, thank God. No, it's no, no. It's, it's, a living, it's a different, better place. Like I've got a confession, guys. Uh, last week, I don't know if it was on this or Ass Low Blows, but I spoke about how I never cried to Game of Thrones before, even when the really sad stuff to happen because you're in that like fucking up to ten and tense mode, yeah, and even a... when something crazy happens, you're just shocked more than upset. You know what I mean? Because you're processing it, you haven't even thought about it. I can confirm that I cried. I'm not shitting you. For the very first time in this episode. And it was when that moment happened. And I hated the moment. And I hated John for doing this. But they got me with when they turned to Ghost. And you see half his fucking ear is gone. His face is mangled. And he's just... I'm just a dog lover. like, And you just look at him. And he's just got those sad fucking dog eyes. But then I'm like, alright. Okay, I got this. I got this. And then... Uh, and then, like, John walks off, and then it goes to, like, a shot of Tormund and Sam. And, like, that was an emotionally charged moment because it felt like a, a final goodbye. I, I think we'll get Sam in for the end, like, writing the, the, the script of it all. Like, I think that's going to be the end. But, like, it felt like a final goodbye to a lot of them, so it's already emotionally charged. And then Ghost just goes... <laughs> and then he walks out and I'm like I'm gone I'm gone I'm fucking gone <laughs> this is horrible like first time ever confirmed I, I guess that's I, technically impression number four is it <laughs> <laughs> right I've been saving an impression for this okay right I'm gonna get it back alright hold on I don't know if I can do it okay cause this guy had a big week okay um, the person I'm gonna talk about is Jamie Lannister Jamie is very very charming what the fuck is that? <laughs> We're working on this, guys, right? I think you can tell. Have you started? <laughs> no, I'm trying to get into it. I'm trying to unlock it. I'm trying to unlock it, right? Okay. <laughs> Jamie Lannister. Jamie Lannister. Everything Jamie says is very cold and very charming. Because he's a bit of a... Please stop. <laughs> God damn it! I didn't get it right. I had something to say, but I couldn't. I can't remember what he said. What does Jamie say? I truly don't. I truly don't. Last week, when like, Rianne's like, what are you doing? And he's like, you know what you're doing. He's like, I truly don't. No? I don't no. Know <laughs> I can do what I mean Tywin. I can do, I can do a one-word impression of Tywin, right? I can do Tywin when he says Lannister. He goes, Lannister. There, there. Hold your applause. Like he's in the room. 
<laughs> Lannister. You are a Lannister. No. Should have stuck with ghost. <laughs> 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 there you go. There you go. Who <laughs> needs CGI? Uh, why did you go, Venice? Why did they kill Littlefinger? Like, it's Littlefinger. I can't do anyone who's left for fuck's sake. Uh, all right, guys. Talk about uh, Keen. You uh, went on record and said you didn't like this episode. Anything else you didn't like about this? No, no. Are you sparring? Like <laughs> it was just boring. No, talk to me. Like. Uh, I, I I get the whole argument. You, know, you need like development and story development and character development and all that. And I mean, like, it'll probably make the payoff a lot better. But I'm just not arse. I just want to see people die and shit. That's like, I just don't have the energy for it. I just want to see the ending. You know what I mean? I'm so sick of waiting. Like, okay, okay, that's fair enough. Now, uh, I'm not accused. I did. I genuinely didn't know you guys would take this stance when I came up with this idea. So. I, I like this isn't aimed at you guys because every, every week we come out and we we review Game of Thrones and you know we use our fans and use our fair on it as well and and the guests we get in are obviously like very passionate about it so they come in and want to support it. The problem I've been having with it is and like it's because we're doing this show as well. So like when I go on the air, I want to know what everyone has thought of the episode. So I'm immersing myself in kind of the feedback culture and reading a lot of the Reddit and this and that. I'm reading everything. And what is annoying me a little bit in this last season is I think it's getting a bit like WWE where, like, you'll watch something on WWE. And, like, I watched this episode and I enjoyed it. And, like, I have to say, I watched it start to finish and I'm like, that was a good episode. Like, was it the best Game of Thrones episode ever? No, it wasn't. But it was never going to be. It was a reset after a battle episode they have to move the pieces to where they want to be for the last two so i accept that but i I was entertained but then i get online and everyone's like it was the worst episode ever i'm like okay fair enough like you didn't like it but the problem is when i say wwe it's like you watch a match in wwe and it's fine but you go online then and you go on Twitter and you're like, this company is dying! This is the worst thing ever! And that's what I'm seeing with Game of Thrones. It's like hot takes and it's like turning the opinion up to 11 where it's like, you can just say you didn't like it. You don't have to make it extreme. You don't have to be like, George R. R. Martin died and rolled over in his grave <laughs> at this fucking episode! <laughs> so what I've taken is, uh, instead of hot takes, we're going to talk about got takes. Uh, and some shitty got takes that I've seen online that I'd like to address this week. Uh, first off, I tweeted about this. This annoyed me so much. <laughs> Someone went online and they were like, that would have been a good episode in a 10-episode season, but not a 6-episode season. This bothers me. Because I thought about what that per- the evolution of thought that person would have had to go through to get to that. What, the- what happened there was they watched the episode and they said it was good, would have been good in a 10 episode season, so they enjoyed that episode. So then they had to work backwards to not enjoying that episode <laughs> and think of reasons why it may not have been good because that was the quote unquote cool different opinion that they could have had. Like, are you telling me that you enjoyed the episode and you thought it was good or are you telling me that it was bad? Like, I fucking, that like, it bothers me. It bothers me the work and effort that goes in for people to say that. Um, also, uh, one person, I had to explain the concept of turning left to him. I had someone, and I actually got involved with this because it was pissing me off. And he's like, like that, that dragon scene couldn't have happened. That couldn't have happened. It's like, you'd never fucking, that, like, Euron was right in front of Danny. And I'm like, he, he wasn't in front of her. You could see. And he's like, no, there was a shot of Tyrion staring at the Iron Fleet. It's like, yeah, he, he came out on the ship and he turned left. Like, they were hiding behind a mountain and Danny sailed into it and, like, Tyrion turned left. And then he's like, the angle isn't important. What's important here? <laughs> <laughs> but she should have seen them from the sky. She should have. Like, from the sky. She's above them, looking what, what, down. What, what she wasn't looking that way? What she's looking, like, the other way? This is what I said. <laughs> I go, I, this is what I said. I go, you're aware of it. Like, before you see something, you don't see it. <laughs> but they had to sail... They had to sail into that cove to, for Dragonstone, yeah? Because that's yeah. where they all washed up. So, yeah. why was she not looking the direction she was flying? She's looking away. Like, it's, there's no reason where she was, so... Uh, another thing that really bothered me. A lot of people got on this. Why didn't we see Arya and Sansa find out about Jon's heritage? Why didn't we get to see their reaction scenes? Here's why. 
Because they can't repeat the same information that we've heard a million times that we, the audience, know. And just to have, here are Sansa and Arya's reactions. <gasps> I wanted to see that, though. Sa- like, Arya got quiet and looked at the ground and processed the thought. Sansa might have got tears in her eyes and put her hand to her mouth. That's what we missed. They couldn't act on it immediately. It wouldn't be realistic. They'd have to process and think about this information. Watching people think does not make good television. I get the frustration where they thought something was going to happen, where John's like to Brad, tell him, and then like it cuts away. But like, what did he tell him? He told him stuff we've heard. They can't do this for every new character who finds out. You can't. You didn't have Tyrion being like. So the thing with John is right. Do you remember Rhaegar? <laughs> you can't keep repeating the same information. Like the Arya and Sansa finding out. There, there's nothing. There's, it's a nothing scene. They would have thought. They would have thought. They would have gone. I don't know what to make of that information. No, they could have done something. Like, because the whole thing is they considered John a bastard and not a Stark for so long. And then it was only as they grew up, they accepted him as not a half-brother, but our brother. They could have done something like, like if Santa had hugged him afterwards, that's a real like, oh, you know what, you're still my family thing. Or if he'd went to touch her arm and she pulled away, that's like yeah, a... Yeah, like maybe, maybe like yeah. they, they could have like, like, maybe even shot the scene where like... It's it's silent and you're just actually seeing their reactions. Like so you don't have to listen to the dialogue again that you've already heard. So maybe just like have some like whatever, music playing in the background and you just see Sansa's reaction and you just see Arya's reaction or whatever. So like I, I get sorta of get it, but like I also understand like we we can't go through this every time. <laughs> every Somebody, episode especially in this episode when like eight <laughs> people find out it's like <laughs> John, and, and, and we did see Sansa's reaction. She went and ratted. This is it. Like, you, at this stage of the game, you can only show information where it's relevant to the plot. You know what I mean? And Sansa then telling Tyrion, okay, there, that exactly what you say. That's the relevant reaction. She did react then. But, like, she wouldn't have an instant reaction. She wouldn't, like, go and we accept you anyway. That's not how you'd react to that because you'd be like, Holy fuck, everything I thought was a lie. <laughs> you don't, it, it wouldn't be realistic. And I think it's one of these things where it's like, if, like, I think if we had an episode that would have been like, with it, like, a, a good in a six episode season, so packed with action and this and that and the other, people would have said, I missed the 10 episode seasons where you got them fleshed out. If you had Sansa and Arya reacting, I think people would have said, and they would have gone, I accept you for who you are. They would have gone, you wouldn't react that way. You, you'd have to think about that. You'd have to process all that information. So it's one of these, like, again, like these anti-WWE opinions where it's like, damned if they do, damned if they don't, whatever. People have decided beforehand that the cool opinion now is because Game of Thrones is so big that everyone's watching it. I can be different on Twitter by disliking it now, so I'm determined. I'm not saying that pe- I'm not saying that there aren't valid criticisms of it. I'm not saying you have to enjoy every episode, but I think there are people who go into it, and like you can see it coming. Where it's like they're gonna hate this, no matter what happens here next week. People are gonna shit on this episode, and it's supposed to be a great episode. But I'm telling you right now, people are gonna shit on it because it's cool. And that's the problem that I have. It's not like you guys. I accept the reasons you dislike the episode. That's that's fr- that's your opinion, but you're not going out and determined to dislike it. You're not going out and saying whatever happens, I'm gonna piss on this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're you're being fair in your criticisms. Uh, last one as well. This is, uh, is the writing is lazy. This bothers me, and it bothers anyone who's written like not stuff like this. I've never written a fucking full scale TV show. Wouldn't be hosting this podcast for what if I had? But like I write and. Anything that, like, for example, they're using this with the, the, the ambush again as an example. I guarantee, like, and here's the thing. When stuff is good and stuff works and flows naturally, that's when the writing is easy. But that's the stuff that everyone likes because one thing leads into another. When it's difficult, like in the ambush, like, we need to kill a dragon and we need to even up the odds, but, like, how are we going to do this? I guarantee you that's the time they spent the most amount of time discussing it in the writer's room as a result. That scene was the least lazy scene in there because that was the one where they're like, there's no way we can get this right. There's no way, no matter what, with all the boxes we have to tick to lead to where we know it it needs to go to, 
someone's going to complain. It's like, I'll give you an example of where we lived this, for, for me, me and you, Keen, where we lived this. Do you remember with Courage, when we were booking the show? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's blocked it out. But, um, do you remember we turned around and we're like, people are going to shit on us for not having a women's match because we weren't... We were told who we could book and who we had booked already, and there were no women on that list. And it's like, we're, we're going to have to do something, but like, I don't want this going out that way. And it's just one of these things where it's like, they're going to judge us based on this, but we have to fucking go out and do it. And fortunately, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you're trying to do a lot of things at once, So, you, but you also know, like, they know that that plan is flawed. They do. But it was probably the best of 15 other plans. And they're like, we have to put something out like we film tomorrow. <laughs> we need to fucking tell the CGI guys what to make and what to do. Like, And they're just like, this is what we have to roll with. And uh, that's just my problem. It's just when you look at it, you're like, that was not lazy what they came up with. It was just the best that needed to uh, achieve uh, what they needed to achieve. Anyway, look. Let's talk about the cool little extras we saw in it. Any Easter eggs or dragon eggs that you uh, you found in this episode? One that I was thinking of is um, actually do with John and Ghost again. Okay. Like, I think it's kind of interesting that he's lost the dragon he rode, the Targaryen side, yeah. and now he's lost the dire wolf, which <sighs> is the Stark side. So now he's kind of like, the like he doesn't have either. He doesn't <sighs> have either side. Like, you don't know... What's he, more important to him? He dropped his new iPad in the toilet. <laughs> 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 yeah. But like now he's n- like, it's, it's almost like he's no sigil. He's no mm. house or allegiance. Like it's, I don't know. It's probably not symbolic of anything, but that's kind of what I got from it. No, it is a cool, like one episode, lost two pets. Yeah. Shit time for John. <laughs> Did I write down another Easter egg? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, well, well, I don't know what you mean by writing it down. This I is mean, all completely yeah, it's all on the fly. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, the other Easter egg. Um, Melisandre's prophecy about their green eyes, blue eyes, uh, brown eyes, eyes you'll shut forever to Arya. This episode showed very clearly during the meeting that Cersei and Danny both have green eyes. Oh. Yeah, they like they zoomed in on Danny's eyes a couple of times, like, and it's like... <laughs> Imagine the legacy of Game of Thrones if it's like... Do you remember Arya? Yeah, she killed... All of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Night <Yeah>. King. The <laughs> like, that's probably just a swerve or a red herring, but, like, it's interesting that they're bringing that in now at this stage, that she has green eyes. It is very interesting. Corbett Keen, I know you've got an Easter egg. No, I'm saving you for the main event of this. So, what, like, that's the main event. You never have these big Easter eggs. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Terry. Um, I don't really think I, ha- I spotted any Easter eggs or, like, anything like that. Like, I did, like, little things like... um. More kind of intrigue. Yeah. Uh, how is Euron going to take this information? Um, Tyrion knew about the pregnancy. Mm. How did he know? When yeah. she uh, when she literally only just told him like five minutes ago or, yeah. something, or whatever it was. So Tyrion rat him out. Like yeah. <laughs> if um, if yeah if he kind of puts two and two together, you might be hang on. Yeah. How did he know that that baby's not mine? Yeah. So um, yeah that that. Yeah, that ties in with my predictions on not on next week, but I'll get into that in a few minutes. Okay, excellent. Can't wait for that. Uh, a few things I picked up on. Uh, <laughs> this is very interesting as well. Uh, Starks are really good and have a solid history of rejecting Baratheons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you think all of this started because a Stark rejected a Baratheon, like yeah, and they even brought that up in this episode. Like it's like. All of this happened because one person couldn't love another. Uh, Arya then rejected a newly made Baratheon in this. Arya, by the way, who Ned used to compare to Lyanna, she used to say she was the head offer. Different words, but yeah. the same idea. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Arya rejecting Gendry, uh, the the kind of the new era Lyanna rejecting literally Robert's child. So there you go. Uh, you have Miss Sandy. This is really sad. All right, you ready for this? Okay, this is this is gonna make you cry. Miss Sandy died in chains after all that. How does that make you feel, Katie? Are you upset? <laughs> oh, wait, no, Katie, you love that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck up! <laughs> like I don't hate Miss Sandy. I just she's not a character I was emotionally attached to. So I just didn't get that emotional when she died. Uh, yeah, it's good enough it's fine. Like, I was pretty upset at, G- at Grey Room's reaction. Like, he looked really sad. Right. 
So well, he wasn't in chains. So you're like, like season chains killer. <laughs> 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 Uh, um, last little note before we get on the kids uh, one uh, d- the makers Benioff and Voice were in this episode they were actually on screen at one stage they were drinking with uh, Tormund they were the two uh, wildlings when Tormund was like he is a god he's a god they just had big fuck off beards put on them stuff like that so really cool extra there now this is what I've been waiting for all episode Corbett Keen what is your easter egg and please it's going to be told bollocks, isn't it? <laughs> right. So it's actually similar to Katie's. You know why Daenerys have green eyes and Cersei have green eyes? Yeah. I know that was in King's Landing. Yeah. They call it King's Landing because the king lives there. This is the analysis that people don't see. But, I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, aren't you, aren't you glad you have me on the show to point these things out? Wait, what, I'm not sure what you're saying. What? <laughs> it's called King's Landing because the king lives there. Right. He doesn't live there now because he's dead. But like when the king lived there, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's called King's Landing because of that. There yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's your point. I'm that's the point. Uh, there you, there the, you go. The that's king is there. Oh, yeah. Wow. I legitimately thought it was going to be the Starbucks cup. Like, that he spotted the Starbucks <laughs> cup. <laughs> Which, by the way, is the greatest marketing thing I have ever seen in my life. There yeah. is no way they didn't know that cup was there. Ooh. Like, when I worked on Vikings, there was... There was li- people whose literally only job was to look at the set for that kind of shit, and you're telling me that they didn't notice a Starbucks cup in front of the main character. They definitely noticed it. The, the showrunners were in the scene. Are you telling me they didn't notice it? Yeah. It's, it's, look how much, look how much uh, Starbucks has got now from publicity. Don't they even have a dragon drink out? Holy shit. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just a massive market employee. Oh, my God. You've blown this thing wide <laughs> open. <laughs> I never thought about that. That's genius. Jeez, I really hope. Was- I think it was just Bran doing his weird, like, time travel thing. <laughs> <laughs> got himself a frappuccino. Get back. I got this wheelchair from 120 years ago. <laughs> and I got this Starbucks from the present day. <laughs> by the new Dragon Special. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, all right, guys, let's get on to next. Or, wait, no, before we have uh, a couple more bit of, bit, uh, bits to discuss. Uh, we want to talk about, like... Stuff, we talked a lot about stuff you didn't like from this episode. I want to talk about stuff that you did like. I want to specifically, uh, stuff that you liked objectively. Uh, Grey Worm is now single, uh, so you have a new person that you can, uh, you can submit for this every week. But uh, let's objectify people. It's time for the latest. Harvey's Hotties. So this week we're going to go with Jamie because we saw his nips. Mm, uh, <laughs> yes, these are my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, he's off the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was a roller coaster of emotions there. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what? Jamie, clearly. <laughs> People are going to think we set that bit up. We absolutely did not. <laughs> that is not how I wanted things to go. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to point out, Jamie's a very handsome man and yeah, well, does uh, does have a lovely voice on the very, show. Very thanks, thanks for ruining this whole segment and just setting it on fire and stepping <laughs> on it and breaking it like... It just hurts. Very attractive voice. Stop. You may have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I've never noticed he sounds like that. <laughs> so can you, can you not even look at me right now? <laughs> every time I watch Game of Thrones now, it's going to be Jamie with your voice in my head <laughs> <laughs> presenting his nips to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to kill Cersei next week. One of the most dramatic, mostly impactful moments in Game of Thrones history. And all Kenny will be able to think about is, oh, Cersei. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? They'll probably be naked, about to ride, and like I'll just see nipples, I'll hear nipples, and it will take me out of the episode completely. Imagine they dubbed Rick's voice over James <laughs> <laughs> for no reason. Look, <laughs> very open voice. All I'm saying is I'm available. If anyone has a technology who's listening to this to do that, please do it. I'll be eternally grateful. Someone's gonna do that. Someone's no, they only do it once. Do just once. It's like a little. <laughs> Second in the show, <laughs> just like, did you notice a tight moment? I like, <laughs> like the Starbucks cup. <laughs> 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 oh, guys, uh, we are not only uh, reviewing every episode of Game of Thrones, we are saying a long goodbye to Game of Thrones as well. So every week we're discussing, uh, we're picking one topic and we're discussing uh, our favorites from the series. A lot of talk about who the real villain is here now, though, Danny or Cersei. Uh, a lot of talk about heel turns and whatnot. So that's 
that's what we want to discuss on this week's Game of Low Blows. We want to talk about your favorite heels in Game of Thrones history. Uh, well, sorry, you, Terry. Um, yeah, I got a, like, a couple of different ideas. Like, I was running through, running through my head on the way over here. Um, yeah, there's like, well, I kind of, I'm, I'm looking at Tywin. Tywin's my favorite. Yeah. Um, out of all the heels, like the the best heels are the ones that like, at at the very least, they believe that mm. they're right. Mm. They have proper motivation. They can justify what they're doing, and everything that he was doing was to preserve his family's legacy. Yeah. But the good thing about uh, the best thing about those kind of heels is that they also make horrible dick bag moves, like uh, like shacking up with Shay. Yeah. Like uh, there you go. I mean, like uh, as much as as much respect as you can have for Tywin and for Charles Dance and, and whatnot when he did that, when he like sentenced Tyrion to death and then stole his misses, it was just no, no, you're actually. No, you're a real dickbag. Yeah. You're an actual dickbag. Hypocrite as well. Like, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Like, mm. um, yeah. So he's like close second, maybe Cersei and Night King in a, a runner-up, just because um, I like the Night the Night King's motivation or lack thereof. Yeah, just he's, he's, he just he was he's, created to kill people to kill humans, and uh, that's what he did. Do you know the main thing about Tywin? Do you know what he was more than anything else? He was a Lannister. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Just doing it to butter Keen now. <laughs> it does, like, it butters me a lot. Like. Oh, I can see that. Uh, best deal in Game of Thrones history. Um, oh, it's a real obvious one. But I'm going to go with Ramsay. Mm. Just because he's a mad fucker. And, like, I was literally, like, putting on the next episode to see what he was going to do. Mm. Like, the moment he got me was with a sausage like <laughs> it's so on the nose so obvious but like I, I, I was laughed no I was disgusted I was like I can't believe like when he set the dogs on his stepmother and stuff like oh, he just Jesus. there was nothing out. it's it's like people say oh anything can happen because Ned Stark was killed literally I felt like that with Ramsey anything could happen because he was such a mad fucker he didn't get, that's the thing as well like uh, do you know what got me about that like she's like oh don't she wasn't surprised like everyone, yeah. she's like, "Oh, fucking please! Oh, no, don't do this to me! Oh, for fuck's sake!" <laughs> and like, your man who plays him is a great actor because yeah. when they're going through everything in the castle, where like you can see him calculating his head that his stepmother's pregnant and that pushes him down yeah. the line, but he's finally been legitimized. Like, it's just, oh, it's it's brilliant. Like he he was really good. Like he's proper heel. And, and like, there's blood on Sansa's ha- hands there as well because like. She kind of you like that was when she was kind of starting to fight back, and then she's like, "Oh yeah, no, what about uh, what about her being pregnant? That's mad. What's that going to mean for you? Just to hurt him?" <laughs> I, do, like, you th- do you think she knew though he'd go that far? No, like this yeah. is the thing you can't predict with Ramsey. Like yeah. it's not, it, no, it's not really blood in her hands, but it's just like, oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, that backfired a fair bit. <laughs> Don't wind up the fucking psycho. Yeah, <laughs> like Battle of the Bastards, this massive fucking battle, and then he's like, "All right, John, guess just you and me now." Like, like he's just like some mad lad you'd meet in a nightclub on a yeah. Saturday night. Like, who'd just fight you for no reason? Yeah. And even like, kind of similar to Tywin, the bit of hypocrisy at the very end when exactly what you said there. Um, at the very end, John had offered him a one-on-one battle, and then like Ramsay just realizes that oh, I've lost the battle, and then he's like, "All right, John." I've reconsidered. One on one. <laughs> Let's do it. Whoever wins wins the whole battle. It's like, you're not going next goal route. Re- yeah. <laughs> no, that's not. You've lost. <laughs> you had the chance, you little prick. Uh, yeah, no, Ramsey, yeah, guaranteed. He's like, uh, and up there for most entertaining as well. Corporate King, I want to hear your favorite heel in Game of Thrones. Uh, I was just thinking of a couple of names. I know, um, obviously, Ramsey's dad was a bitch, in my opinion. Bruce Baldwin? <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like him. Uh, Joffrey, bit of a dick. Oh yeah, that's oh, kind of yeah. that's kind of the obvious one. Stannis burned his daughter alive, which, in my, in my opinion, wasn't very nice. Then, <laughs> Not a fan of that. Oh no. no, I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was the coolest thing he could have done. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, he's got an argument, but at the end of the day, John didn't pet his fucking dog. John's a cunt. <laughs> I hope he dies now because of that. Fuck him. So yeah, I'm gonna go with John. 
Oh, right. <laughs> yes. The one, like, full-on baby face in the show. The baby one. face. After, after last week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. No, I, I don't disagree with you, though. Uh, for me, I think they're saving the best for last. For me, Cersei is the biggest heel in the show and the best heel. Cersei as well. Now, I'm kind of... Uh, tainted by reading the books as well. Uh, what do you think of Cersei's chapters in the books? Uh, does she have them in? She doesn't have. I'm only in the first one. Okay, there's no Cersei. Oh, right. Yeah, there's no Cersei chapters. There, there is, and they're amazing because the best thing, if you haven't read the books, the best thing is they're told completely different to the story. They're told from a point of view of different characters per chapter. Oh yeah, I love Bran in the books. Bran yeah. in the books is deadly. Yeah, because you just you, you learn so much yeah. about it. Yeah, but they just they kind of got them wrong with the show. Yeah, uh, Cersei in the books is fantastic because you can both relate to every move she's making. So it's the same character arc as the show. A loving mother who like has had a shit life, but like just lives to protect her children. Ultimately. We learn about the prophecy and everything kind of working against her. So she kind of believes the world has it in for her. And then just slowly going mad as her plans go awry. Um, But you also relate to her completely. This is the thing. Like, we had Cersei, when, when she had to do the walk of shame, like, we felt for her. You know what I mean? There's that part of Cersei that, like, well, Corporate King did. Did we? You're, uh, you're a sadist. <laughs> I, I thought the whole point was that it was like a heel getting their comeuppance. I didn't realize that was meant to be like a sad thing, was it? Really? You thought that was fair? I or did. Nice, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair. That's right, what did you uh, think? Maybe for the first minute or so, but when it drags on for like, you know, whatever, <laughs> like 13 <laughs> minutes or something like that, you're kind of go, oh. It was like, all right, hurry that's, a lo- that's a long old walk. Seriously, <laughs> like, go for a fucking jog. I did think it was funny when like, some of the fans would like come up, like hop the barricade and go <laughs> over <laughs> and just be like, I just remember one of them wrote to me like, not rest. <laughs> one of them wrote to her and to be like, can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, really? You, you've got, I mean, I'm sure, you get out of your system, fuck it, why not? I think but at the start, it was like, yeah, fuck it, Cersei deserves it, like, fuck her, this is, this is our big comeuppance. But then, like, it, like Ter- as Terry said, like, as it went along, it's like, she's getting shit thrown on her. <laughs> and I'm like, that's disgusting. I don't care who it is. There's like creepy guys like showing her their cocks. Helicopter like, and stuff. Yeah, like, like it's like no, no one fucking deserves that. No matter what. Yeah, I'm like this is too far. I'm like getting wrestling fans. You know what I mean? But that's the thing. Like you, you relate to Cersei, but then she'll just go left. Like even when she blew up the set of Baylor, psychopathic move. But what other move did she have? Do you know what I mean? And that's what makes her great because well, like her her, her option was to die, like. That that was it, like you know what I mean. Was there not a plan C apart from blowing up half a city? I know, I I I definitely think that was not a good move. <laughs> no. I thought it was. She killed the holy dad. But I can born. I can see how Cersei felt backed into that corner, and like again, this is the thing, and this is why I love her character in the books because you're with her and you can see the logic, and you're like. Oh, again, yeah, you're like, there is another plan you could go with, Cersei, here. <laughs> but you're choosing to go with the most psycho plan, and you're a nutcase. And then when that accumulates, you're like, right, she is what she is now. Where she, and Tyrion is like, I know you care about your children. And she's like, ha ha, behead someone. You know what I mean? <laughs> she's like, that's where her mental, her headspace is now. She's gone. But, like, we've seen her there as just the person who is like, we just let me fuck my twin and mind my kids. That's all I want. <laughs> That's all I want. Is that too that, much for a queen to ask for? <laughs> That's the episode title, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for me, Cersei is the best deal because of that internal wrestling logic that a heel has to believe in what they're saying. I've been with Cersei... And then, like, you see her do the other thing that's like, well, the nuclear button would be to yeah. do this. She just always pushes the nuclear button, and you're like, oh, Cersei. Oh. Just on your, your, uh, the hypocrite point as well, like, and even that, like, her total lack of remorse when uh, Tommen. Yes. When Tommen died. Yeah. Uh, it was just, yeah, just born him. Charles Ashes on the the set of Baylor. Yeah, he that's was it. shit. In fairness, I I don't blame her at all. I don't, I don't, I don't think you know that's why they call the King's Landing. Oh it's shit! Oh, the oh, 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 <laughs> same with same with Brand. They call it Winterfell. Oh, <laughs> push down the wind. <laughs> oh my god! Goodness, the Easter eggs all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, there we go, guys. Uh, let's talk about next week. Where Amelia Clark has come out and said that next week's episode is fucking insane. So I think we can get ourselves a little bit hyped. But what do we think is going to happen? It certainly looks like we're getting a battle episode again. Cersei, Danny, it looks to be set up. The, 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 the battle director, the guy who did Hard Home, Battle of the Bastards, Battle of Winterfell, he's back for this one. So it's pretty much confirmed that we're getting a big fuck-off battle. An hour 20 minutes again. So, But what do we think is going to happen? Any theories? Um, yeah, it, uh, well, there's... This is the second last episode. Yes. This Everything is- always goes down in the penultimate episode yeah. of the season. So, yeah, I, I, I reckon something major is happening and uh, judging from the preview I've had to come up with a bit of a, an idea um, well I had a bit of help from me mate but um, yeah Gendry gets made Lord of Storm's End mm-hmm. that's now he's officially an ally to Daenerys Gendry has a, a pretty good skill set when it comes to making weaponry and making armour what if he starts making some armor for Drogon oh. to protect him against those scorpions? Because, like, obviously she sees it now that, yeah, like, last season the scorpion wasn't all that much. This season they've got fucking shitloads of them, oh. and they murdered one of them. Like, that's that's a viable option there. Like, start armoring up Drogon. And oh. when you watch the preview, you see Euron looking up into the sky... And he's got his little swaggery face on, but then all of a sudden it, it turns to fear. Yeah. Drogon is boring the shit out of your, your on next week. <laughs> that is happening. Like, he, he is good and dead. Oh, interesting. Oh, that'd be so class. Just yeah. seeing, like, a dragon Big Ranger. fucking metal dragon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, fucking Drogon. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting one. I like that. What do you think, sir? Do you think, like, uh, we could get Clegane Ball? Oh, get that yeah. Ball? Yeah. Is, is Rogan the, the dragon? The big yeah. dragon. <laughs> okay, right. Because I literally didn't know who you were talking about at the start. The, the clue's in the name. Yeah, but it's so obvious. I was like, oh, it's probably like. I, I, my initial thought process was like the Dothraki or something. I was like, I don't, I don't know why. I don't he's know. named after Khal Drago. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, all the dragons are named after like, the men in her life. Lot of Fuck off. So, here. like, Viserion is Viserys, her brother. And uh, Rhaegal is Rhaegar, her other brother. She had another brother? John's That's father. Oh. Dad. <laughs> Dr- John's dragon is Rhaegal, <laughs> his dad. Anyway, uh, I think I think Varys is going to decapitate Daenerys. He's, he's going to do it himself. Yeah. He's going to just get a sword at this person we've never seen with any weapons whatsoever. He was in the crypt, hiding while Sansa wasn't. He's biding his time, man. Yeah? <laughs> I'm serious. I think he's going to do it. Okay, we got a theory in from Jerry uh, in the Low Blows group uh, who says that he thinks Varys is getting, he's going to try a, an assassination attempt, get caught, and he's going to get burned next week. Mm. He did, I can see that as very possible. Yeah. I yeah. reckon he's going to at least make an attempt to, I'd say he's going to attempt to, pay, to appeal to John Force and try and convince John that, like, no, look, Man, you're the you're the one we should be following. Like, yeah. you, I'll convince you. You convince her, and let's stop the, this madness or whatever. And then, yeah, she's gonna find out and born him. Yeah, yeah, born and him that, alive. A, 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 another reason I like that theory is Tyrion seems very on the fence about what needs to happen with Danny. He knows Varys is right. But he also wants to believe in Danny. He's committed his life to believing in Danny. He's her hand. He doesn't want to turn on her. Something needs that to happen. Varys is his best, though. Danny burning Varys, like, as opposed to not, because that's the way she'd react. And I think that's what she threatened him with beforehand, if he did uh, turn on yeah, her. So it is, it's out there. Um, she acts on that, and yeah, that could be what turns Terry. So I do like that theory. Credit to Jerry, uh, Katie. What have you? What do you think's happening next week? Are my, we getting any big ones? Uh, my theory has never come true. Phil tried to explain a theory to me. I was going to try steal for myself tonight, and I can't really remember what it is. <laughs> but it centers around the Golden Company being a foreign army and like banks and stuff. I can't remember what it was. I'll have to ask him and steal it next week. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I really wish it was really good, but I was a little bit drunk listening to him, so <laughs> <laughs> I can't really remember. Um, Do you think we're at Game Ball? Yeah, I think we're getting that. I think, I think it was a mistake making Gendry a Baratheon because now he has a claim. So I think Ooh. now she's just actually sur- like she's just thinks she because she actually said it. She's like she's made a comment about how clever she is. Yeah, but like that wasn't clever because now she's just created another claim to the throne. That's like me saying I'm good at impressions. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, like, he might be angry after getting rejected by Arya, you know, like, as you are saying, like, the reason this all started is because Lyanna re- rejected Robert. Oh, shit! And now Arya has rejected him. He has a claim to the throne. That's what started the original war. Oh, shit. But, like, he doesn't have an army. The, yeah, the, like, if they had more than two episodes, <laughs> yeah, I could see that building up. Yeah, But imagine, like, the last episode, Genji's army. It's just Genji and a bunch of his lads from <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> We're in charge now, dragon. <laughs> but, like, they have said, like, Varys has said he wants someone like John that people will follow, that people like. Ooh. Like, what if they get rid of John and Danny and, like... Install Gendry as some sort of like. Sansa would be pissed. <laughs> She's like, I'm right here. I'm really good at this. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, but girl, you don't have a dick. You can't fucking talk. Yeah, but still a sexist. Yeah, it won't be getting as big as that. But I think it was a mistake on her part to make him legitimate. Oh, I do like that. There is a lot of parallels there. I didn't even cop that myself with when I was saying it. Like I didn't cop it till I started talking. Holy shit! But someone, because I was just thinking back to the. There he's getting killed idea. Surely, like, because what what happens in the last episode then if like Cersei and all are like dead? Here's the thing: is Cersei dying next week? Do we get the payoff that, that's for a, yeah. the Jamie storyline? Like, we've got a lot to get to because obviously he has to. Like, if he is going back, and and you've you've convinced me there that it, of his motives for going back. If he is going back for love, finding out that Euron is being claimed as his baby's daddy, that's <laughs> enough to turn him, I'd say. Do you think Bronn's the only thing in this episode? No, I think they, they've they they've cleared it up with Bronn. Bronn's scene was him at his Bronn best, and they're just like, the, the last we'll see of Bronn is presumably if the good guys win, him and Highgard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his castle. I think Bronn is, I, I feel a lot better that Bronn's getting his happy ending. Uh, by the way, shout out as well. He he like Bron believes in the game of Loblaw's theory of two castles is better than one. He he said himself getting River Run. That's what at least direct. Bron was never promised River Run. That was total bollocks. That was a negotiation tactic on his part. Oh. It was fucking genius, like because we saw the negotiation. He was offered chests of gold. Like we heard all that. <laughs> Kyburn would have said like and River Run, <laughs> but he made that up to just go right. I mean, offered River Run. Give me double that. Oh, shit. It's fucking genius. <laughs> so Bronn as well, like, great negotiation. Actually, someone said something to me today about Bronn that made sense. So, like, we know, like, in the real world, Bronn and Cersei can't be in the same scene together. But the person I was talking to didn't know this, and he was like, do you not think it's really interesting that, like, Cersei didn't give Bronn the crossbow? We don't know if the orders came from her to kill Jaime and Tyrion. And I was like, oh, but that's because of, like, you know, they can't be in a scene together. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that, but, like, what if that's not the reason? What if Cersei doesn't know Bronn has been instructed to kill them? Yeah. What if Kyburn was doing like a Joffrey on it where Joffrey tried to have Bronn assassinated to impress Robert and it's just like, whoa, dude, what are you doing? Like, no one said that. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to impress Cersei by being like, look what I did, you know? Oh, I'm not even going to do Oh, my God. Right, okay. Second last episode ever a Game of Thrones. Second last episode, The Red Wedding... Ned died. There is a third holy shit moment in this show that Benioff and Voice spoke about that George R. R. Martin told them about. Um, we have seen two so far. One of the, the last one we saw was Hold the Door. So, like, shit that they didn't see coming. There is one left. Do we get it in this episode? What could it be? What could it be about? And do we have, as per... <clears throat> Red Wedding, Ned Stark logic. Do we have a main character dying next week? Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. skilled in areas. I'm confident. I am, because it's such a, like, the, would you go holy shit if that happened? <laughs> <laughs> I like how everything I'm saying, you've just corralled into your random <laughs> prediction. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. I just think it's going to happen. I don't think you should put money on that. 
I'm not going to. <laughs> but like, <laughs> he could be on. responsible for her dying. But like, I don't know if he's killing her himself. Uh, well, you're not meant to. Know. You know I mean, who who predicted Arya was going to kill the Night King? Arya trained as a killer for years. Yeah. How do you know Varys hasn't been doing that secretly? He, he could kill her by not chopping her head off, but by poison. Because don't they always say poison is a eunuch's weapon? Yeah, do you know what? I'll, I'll say, yeah, okay, he'll, he'll kill her. It might not be decapitation, but he'll kill her, right? That's my prediction. <laughs> okay, uh, look, fair enough. <laughs> fair, look, I didn't have Littlefinger and, uh, what's her name? Oh, my God. Uh, thing. The Tyrell, Marjorie's... Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Olena. Olena, yeah. I didn't have Littlefinger and Olena to kill Joffrey, so who knows? Like, he, Go on, Varys. Go on, don't let me down now. Please don't let me down. I'll put too much on now. <laughs> Do you see a big character die next week? Do we see maybe more than one, and who will it be? Uh, yeah, I, I reckon we're getting to Game Ball next week. Right. I well, reckon that's definitely happening. And, and yeah, That's I, the mountain and the hound fighting each other. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I should have clarified earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting here pretending I knew what that was. I had no idea. Literally, the only person who doesn't know that is the person with the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen the little flash of confusion in his eyes once or twice now, and it's been mentioned. So. Yeah, I've got to help now. <laughs> Slash Mega Show. We're getting it. Uh, do we, do, how, how do we think that goes? A lot of people say, um, Are you assist? Yes, yeah, yeah I reckon. I don't know, there's something about the, this whole like face swapping thing where are you trying to maybe attempted to kill Cersei while possibly dressed as Jamie and then Mountain stops her, the hound comes in, makes the save, and then it sets it up. And I'd love to see it as just a big monster fight in the middle of the throne room. Like not in front of a crowd, not in front of in the middle of a battle around, just two of them going one on one. Smashing the shit out of each other in the throne room. Interesting, interesting. Do you do, do you think that great? Because I remember I, I was reading. I was, I was actually I was reading on Reddit after that episode. Uh, I've seen this. And no, no, no. This is just. Do you think Grey Worm is gonna have any sort of like, uh, like I don't know. I just, I just feel like he has to have something to do with the mountain. Well, like I feel like I, I, him or the Hound have to die. I saw on Reddit like. An idea, make this a triple threat and call it Clagrain Bowl. Because Grey Worm. No. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it worked a lot better in text. <laughs> I didn't make it up. I puffed, though. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if, the mount, if he went for the mountain and the mountain killed him. And that set it up. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, that makes I sense. I see that happening. Because Grey Worm, he's got nothing to live for now. Yeah. Like, it, even if Danny's going to go... Like, that, he used to last to Danny's OGs, actually. <gasps> so you could take that even away from her. Do you, oh. think, do you think we get any resolution in Danny John, or are we saving that for the last episode? Uh, it's probably the last episode, yeah. I think. Do you think Dario is going to come back across the sea? I thought so last week, but the time's kind of passed for that now. She needed an army last week. Yeah. What if they do a thing where, like, Yara's coming along with her little fleet of ships, and they're like, oh, that's not enough, and then, like, his ships come in behind. <laughs> that would be quite the coordination, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> that's real, like, Dario X Machina. Like, it's yeah. too much. <laughs> it's going to be great. I think we're getting a great episode next week. I hope so, guys. I think this is sneaky going to be, like, the one we all talk about. They know... We expect a lot with the second last episode. This is the last second last episode we're getting, so uh, fingers crossed. It, it kind of has to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's only, there's only two episodes left, and there's yeah. still a lot of people alive. You know what I mean? Like, so it's gonna happen. I'm really excited now. I, I wasn't until this. Now I'm really excited. <laughs> You're getting your debts, Keith. Don't worry, uh, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we have a lot to plug. Terry, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, no problem. You've got a busy couple of months ahead. What do you got coming up? Uh, this weekend is the School of Irish Wrestling's first show. It's on in Bray. It's in the Wolf Town Centre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Wolf Town. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the name of it. Uh, I think it's on at uh, four o'clock. Um, yeah, there's that, then there's Belfast in, is it next week? Uh, January 26th. Can't yeah, 26th. 26th May, yeah. There's Belfast, I think Cork is on the 25th as well, uh, the Battle of the Bastards Phoenix, down yeah. there. Um, and then Belfast on the 26th, and uh, WrestleRama coming up next month, then on the 23rd of June. So yeah, uh, that's, that's me for the next few months, unless I'm forgetting that. So there you Sorry. go. Stay tuned to. Uh, you can also follow him on Twitter at Dethatched. That's me. Thatched. So there you go, guys. Uh, you can get all the info about upcoming days. Thanks so much for joining us. Great no to have problem. you on. We've been dying to for a long time. So I uh, just want to. Uh, I want to just like 
I was really happy with this. I was writing down my notes earlier, and um, yeah, uh, you, yeah, little tiny little things, but one of my notes was sad ghost, and I wrote, uh, drew a little sad ghost, and I was very happy. Oh, can we get a picture of that for? Look how cute he is. We'll get a picture of that. We're <laughs> gonna stick that up on social media. <laughs> I, I just I, the bus was too bumpy, and I couldn't draw a wolf. I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna set me off again, man. That's <laughs> the one sentence I did not expect to make. <laughs> <laughs> Corbett Keane, the return is coming to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I'm back in uh, 13 days, and I can't fucking wait. Um, you, you don't want to give any indication you're saving it as a surprise, or? Well, it's not. It's not really a big thing. I'm just come back in 13 days, and I can't fucking wait. I am so like literally. Ah, oh, I, I just yeah. I'm gonna be. It's. I'm gonna be uploading twice a week as well. Like, I'm going all out over. Like once these exams are over, I'm fucking. I'm going all out. I can't wait. Okay, excellent. Subscribe to Corporate Keen on YouTube and uh, you can view his back catalogue and get caught up before the big return. Katie, big couple of months for you ahead. Uh, Five Factory announcing some uh, big shows. Yeah, so we have our combo tickets on sale now for eight and nine. Uh, episode eight is May 31st and so far announced is More Than Hype versus The Cruisers in the rematch for the titles. Uh, and then on episode 9, June 21st, we have Jonathan Gresham coming Big. for the first... Well, what I thought was the first time in Ireland until someone found a, a, a fucking Irish whip show we did 12 years ago. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Apparently so, under a mask called Hero Tiger. <laughs> Holy fuck. Do, do we remember that? I don't remember no. that. I'll, I have it on my phone. I'll, I'll show it to you. But, uh, as you weren't there, so you were like... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's no. That was a different guy. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. As Jonathan Gresham, this is his first time in Ireland. Right. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Good stuff. So check that out. Tickets Eventbrite. Get tickets on Eventbrite, guys, as well. Uh, let us know you're coming. It's going to be busy as well. So we expect with uh, the big names. We have some more big announcements still to come. So uh, get tickets on Eventbrite beforehand. Make sure you snap them up. We don't know if tickets will be on sale on the door on the night for these ones. On the big show on Dublin City, uh, it's absolutely class. Five Factory going international. Uh, last year we said that the, you know we're, our, our objective was to kind of fill the big show and put on class shows as good as you see anywhere else, but just with Irish talent this year, now it's kind of like we're bringing in some of the world and seeing how the Irish talent fare against them. So Just on that note, um, whoever started that petition for Dom Tuck to wrestle Jonathan Gresham, stop it immediately. Um, <laughs> and Sorry about that. <laughs> Look, as the GM, I have to keep the fans what they want in mind. The tweet said the octopus versus the octotuck. And I was like, I'm done. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I can sell that. <laughs> that's that's like number two or three on my list of matches that might happen. Uh, anyway, guys, we shall see. Stay tuned to Five Factory uh, or be on my own social media. On the Lobos Network this week, we have the one with the podcast. Uh, continue with a lot of links, Africa Talk. So if you're a fan, listen to that. Uh, we will also have Paddy's New Yacht back uh, with predicting the last day of the Premier League. I am going to put a 10-way accumulator bet on. It never works, but you never know. That means it has to sometime. Uh, we're going to bet on every single match this weekend, so we shall see. Stay tuned for our picks. Uh, guys, thank you so much again. But for now, uh, thank you to Terry, Terry Thatcher. I just need to call you Terry Thatcher. Uh, <laughs> sound like Niall Fox. <laughs> Terry Thatcher, thank you to Corbin Keen, uh, thank you to Katie Harvey, I'm a Rick National, until next week. Our watch is ended. Mm-hmm.